I'll start this video by telling you I think that geometry is a terrific thing, but uh, it will always be my opinion that trig makes it so much, so much more fun and so much cooler to look at. Uh, let's start with this idea here. Uh, we start with a circle with a uh, with a triangle here. Let's let this be a right. Tri that's a worst right triangle ever. All right, it's a right triangle, right? And we say okay in um, in uh, geometry, say okay, let this be theta right here, the, our angle of interest. And then we did a lot of work, and we said, okay, well, we have, uh, we learned this, right? Remember, uh, so ka toa. And that, these are the, the trigonometric relationships, right? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. We worked on that, you got really good at it, you learned the Pythagorean theorem, uh, you applied it. Now I'm here to tell you we're going to do it a little bit differently. So what I want to discuss with you today is that, hey, what sine of theta can be expressed in terms of x and y? And the way that we're going to do that, if you don't mind, is I'm going to try desperately to draw a circle. And here's my circle. And I see that this piece of the thing, of my right triangle doesn't touch here, but it can't, right? Because if this touched here, then this piece would be up here, wouldn't it? So I'm aware. I'm asking you to believe, if you don't mind, that this is the center of my circle. This is the point zero, zero here. So that is to say, my circle is in, um, is in standard position. Does that make it any better? Let's pre pretend that it makes it a lot better. And you're like, wow, yeah, that's really clear now. Uh, if not, I'm asking you to pretend some more with me. Okay, so that's the, kind of the best I can do. But here I have my, I'm arguing with you that my, my angle is in standard position. It's in standard position here. And now I'm asking you to look at this differently and say, okay, if this is the point zero, zero, then this thing, right, we, we have forever, we've said from theta you go straight out, you go straight out to opposite. And I'm asking you now, isn't it true that opposite, that opposite, if you look at it differently, opposite is kind of, I don't know, the height, isn't it? This is this is a height of zero here, isn't it? And it goes up to this height up here, doesn't it? So I'm asking you to look at this differently and say, oh my gosh, this opposite thing is actually not so opposite at all. It could, This can be described as possibly as the y value here, can't it? And if you can see that, we're really seriously well on our way. And I'm, if you're buying all that, then I'm asking you to take a look at this also and say, this is adjacent, right? If this is opposite, this is adjacent. This is always the, the longest side of here is going to always be the hypotenuse, right? So... If this is theta, then we would usually say, hey, this is this part right here is the adjacent side. And I'm asking you, if you're willing to call this one y, are you also willing to call this one x? Right? It will always be true that a point from the center of a circle to its edge will always be the radius. So now I'm going to say, I'm going to ask you to believe that instead of calling the radius, instead of calling the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse, I'm asking, can we call it radius? And we're going to, it gets really, really good for us. It gets fantastic, terrific for us. Because what's going to happen for us a lot in trig is that we're going to be on this unit circle and R, the radius, will always be one. And my gosh, it just gets good for us. So if this is true, if this is true here, then instead of sine being opposite over hypotenuse, now isn't it Y over R? And I'm saying to you, with anticipation, of this thing being one, isn't sine really equal to y? I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here, right? And then let's move over to the next trig function here. The next, let's say the next trig function is cosine theta. And we know cosine theta from geometry. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, this is our adjacent down here, but we recognize now that because of the way it's positioned in this standard position here, that it's the x value. So isn't it true now that it's x over r? with anticipation, if you're believing me, that R, at some point, we're going to start calling R1, and it's just cosine, it's just going to be X. And then we go from there, and we go to the tan function, right? We're going to do all six functions real quick. The tan function, tan of theta, if you remember, is, right, tan is opposite over adjacent, so it's Y over X. Now I'm asking you to look at the absolutely the bizarre. If I'm asking you to believe that sine is that sine is r over y and cosine is y over r just by doing a little bit of math. Isn't it true that tan is sine over cosine? Sine 
over cosine. I'm just saying, is, is it possible? Because this is going to get really, really pretty. And when you start to understand this, it, it's going to be this amazing jump in the way you understand things. So I'm asking you to kind of um, stick with me on it here. If this is true, then what's the, what's the reciprocal of sine, right? Isn't it cosecant theta? So cosecant theta is r over y. Remember, that's if y is not equal to 0, because that would give us a domain issue here. The reciprocal of cosine theta, right? Kind of go back. This is something you just have to memorize. I'm, we're going to prove it. But this is also something you have to memorize. The reciprocal of cosine is secant, right? Is secant theta. And secant theta is r over x. Remember what? If x is not equal to 0. And I, this is my favorite one because it makes perfect sense why it's reciprocal. The reciprocal of tan would be cotan. So this is cotan theta. Cotan theta is x over y. And again, if y is not... Wah! I'm sorry. If y is not equal to 0. This um, may seem like a lot of extra stuff. And if you're taking trig right now, anywhere, and you're thinking, I'm just going to forget this, this is stupid. This, right here, this is key to what's about to happen. Because we're going to translate this into something called the fundamental identities. And we're going to take those fundamental identities. You're going to me memorize those things. And we're going to start doing trigonometric um, proofs. And they are absolutely doable if you've worked your way through this. If you stop here and you're like, forget it, I'm going to skip this. I'm going to go on to the next part. You're not. Sorry. I mean, God bless you. I, if you, I wish you could, but you can't. So memorize these things. Take a look at this. This is something that you can really, really do. All right? Uh, I'm looking for your comments. Um, keep studying. I'm very proud of you. Are we still here together? We are. Ciao.